Welcome again, everyone, to our Soybean Shop Talk series. I'm Jana Fritz, the CEO of the Michigan Soybean Committee. Today we are in St. Charles, Michigan with Greg Mahoney. Nice to see you, Greg. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Today's topic is soybean cyst nematode and better management practices to handle that yield robbing pest. Uh, before we get into that topic, though, Greg, tell us about the farm. Well, I, this is a farm where I grew up. Um, it's, it's, I'm third generation farmer and uh, we, we were in the dairy business. We milked cows for a lot of years and then uh, after we got rid of the cows, we were just basically corn, soybeans and wheat mm -hmm. uh, farming on all 600 acres. Excellent. All right. So, soybean cess nematode. Yep. That has been a challenge for soybean growers for many, many years. Tell us how you got started with uh, research or, or changing your management practices when it comes to SCN. Tell us about the history that you've had. I bought a farm back in the late 1980s and the uh, previous owner farmed continuous soybeans and the yields were not very good and we had it tested and it was just loaded with cyst nematodes. So um, at that time, uh, MSU Extension put the word out that they're looking for a field for research. And that's where I met uh, Dr. Fred Warner and Dr. Uh, uh, George Bird. And we done research on this, this one part of the farm. Mm -hmm. And we and he did with different uh, cyst resistance. He had a susceptible, had the P. King, PI 8788, and another one called Ina. Okay. And he rotated it pretty much the same way or as far as trying to find out what the population is. And um, after several years of doing that, I suggested uh, trying no-till because with the soybean cyst nematode, it only travels in the soil about four inches a year. Okay. So if you were to no-till and not move that soil, you might have better success. He tried that and it worked really well okay. doing that on, on this research plot. So uh, we did that work for about six years so after that, let's fast forward to 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Seaman from the Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee reached out to me because he knew of the work that we had Great. Uh, with uh, Dr. George Bird. And he wanted to know if we still had a plot for doing some more cyst research because we had an MSU had a new uh, nematologist, Dr. Uh, Marisol Quintanella. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we moved that plot to the closer to the farm. It's on a sandy field right next to the barn. Uh, a lot of cysts there as well. Okay. And with that system, the plot that we did, we did this plot since 2017. We no-tilled six row strips uh, into the plot, you know, each containing uh, the susceptible, the Peking, the PI 88788. Mm -hmm. And then we keep track of that map, take the soil sample results, uh, for population and yield, then the following year she would put the different forms of resistance on top of, we no-till right on top of the old row. Okay. And put the different form of resistance uh, in, uh, in that strip. So like say if it was Peking last year, she would put a PI 88788 in it this year. Sure. And then she'd also had strips where it was continuous Peking and continuous uh, PI 88788. Okay. So we are still working on with that. We've done that uh, through 2020. So this year we're doing something a little different. We planted the whole plot to wheat. Okay. Then we're going to plant crossways a soybean trap crop, cover crop, trap crop. Okay. And we're gonna plant strips of a uh, the Enlist with a PI-88788 form of resistance. Great. And then we're gonna leave strips of just wheat stubble. And then this fall they're going to take uh, measurements of uh, cyst population. Okay, wow, that's great, great research being done. So you've had a lot of experience, both back uh, a little ways with Dr. Bird, Dr. Warner, and, and more recently. Tell us, Greg, about any management changes, you know, through that you've seen through this research. What have you changed on the farm to, you know, uh, better improve your yields and combat against SCN? The big thing that I've done is just uh, crop rotation. That's still the biggest uh, purpose or the biggest reason to help control soybean cyst nematode. Uh, plus, uh, uh, 
the yield results that I've seen, there's very little yield difference between conventional till and no-till soybeans. So I've been no-tilling the soybeans and I've done a lot of no-tilling in 30-inch rows since we have the cyst only travel a short distance every year in the sure. soil. Uh, that was, seems to work out very well for me. Good. And uh, that's what Dr. George Bird was finding also in his research on that. So between uh, crop rotation and reduced tillage, uh, I've got a pretty good handle on, uh, on soybean cyst nematode. Great, great. So what I assume, Greg, you are testing for SCN on your whole farm annually. Is that correct? Uh, not annually. Not annually, okay. Uh, wherever I start seeing a problem, then we'll have it tested. Sure. But uh, I know I've got numbers out there. Uh, they're, they're there. I'm very well aware of that. Yeah. But uh, the main thing is is to keep the rotation going and keep the population low as okay. much as we can. Okay, excellent. So farmers might not realize that SCN would be the culprit in some of their yield drag, right? It's not necessarily something everyone just knows intrinsically. You, you know you have it in this area, um, but that testing factor is something that first all farmers should initiate if they think they have a challenge with SCN? Is that where they should start? That should, absolutely. They should start by getting, uh, getting it sampled. Um, and carefully digging up the roots and you can almost see the, you can see the cyst on the roots, uh, like a little lime colored cyst. Yep. And uh, you can see the, if you got a general yellowing and circular patterns in the field, that's yep. a good situ good indication. Uh, lighter soils, you'll see it more prevalent. Okay. So, and uh, one thing that we are, we're discovering by um, Mer Dr. Marisol's research yes. is when guys are growing continuous soybeans, which there are some in this area that do, yep. uh, I strongly recommend to uh, rotate forms of resistance every year. Very good point. If, if you were to use P. King every year, thinking that is the better cyst protection, the cyst will, be, will become resistant to it very quickly. Yes. The best, what we found is the best way to keep the numbers down if a guy is growing continuous soybeans okay. is to um, rotate forms of resistance. Excellent. Very, very important. Excellent. Good, good advice. All right. So if a farmer thinks they have a cyst problem, if they've tested, um, where can they get more resources? Where can they get more information? Um, well, probably through the Michigan Soybean Committee, yeah. uh, MSU Extension, or contact MSU directly, Dr. Uh, Marisol Quintanella. She's, uh, she's probably, I think she's the head uh, nematologist Excellent. down there. Excellent. So that would be places to uh, check. And if the grower wants to talk to me personally, I can try to answer his questions. Excellent. Well, very good. Well, thank you so much for your time, Greg. We greatly appreciate your insight into this, uh, as, I, as we said, yield robbing pest trying to get as much control of it as possible, but we understand it's a challenge out there for some growers, so. It is, and thank you for uh, inviting me to do this. Absolutely. Thank you again for joining us for our Soybean Shop Talk series. If you or another farmer in your area are doing something innovative in their management practices on their farm, please get in contact with our Soybean Committee office. Have a great one.